Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Miss Day. Let's talk about optical illusions or op art using concentric rectangles. Ooh. All right, so I already showed you how to do the concentric circle design. Let's work on the concentric um, rectangles. All right, so you're gonna need a ruler because you have to do this with a ruler. Um, searching for my pencil, I just found it. All right, so um, I guess I'm gonna do centimeters just because uh, I'm working on this small scale. Um, you can do inches if you prefer that. So when you're working on concentric rectangles or concentric squares, I, I like rectangles, but you can do a square also if you want. You have to remember that we want to increase this distance between our next rectangle. We want to increase it each time. All right, so first we're going to set up by drawing our concentric rectangles. And I do have a kitty cat assistant right here. Come here, kitty cat. All right, so let's increase the distance here. So I'm going to increase it um, half a centimeter. So I'm putting a mark there. I'm also going to come down here. So I have my rectangle lined up there. I'll, I'll zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. So you can see I'm, I'm just lining it up here and I'm putting a mark on half so that I can see where to draw my line. Um, of course, you know, measure twice to make it nice. If you want it to be a straight line, then you need to always measure twice. So let's come on this side and measure half a centimeter out and half a centimeter out and scoot over and do it again. Measure twice to make it nice. So once I have those two marks, I know that my line is going to be straight. So this was half a centimeter. Um, we could do three quarters or we could do a whole centimeter. Let's do, let's just go ahead and do a whole centimeter. It'll be faster. Okay, so here's measure twice to make it nice. Alright, now let's go this way and make sure that I've got an inch, I mean, excuse me, a centimeter here, a centimeter here, a centimeter here, okay. And when you're drawing this design, I would say, you know, use a 2H or um, an HB, which is just like a regular number two. And uh, draw lightly so that if you do need to erase, that you can and it doesn't damage the paper. All right. Um, let's say, let's do a, a one and a half centimeters. One and a half. Come up here. One and a half. One and a half. All right. So I'm making kind of a guesstimation uh, when I'm when I'm drawing them as to where I think it's going to fall. Uh, that's why I'm trying to line it up a little bit as I go. Okay, so one and a half, one and a half. Measure twice to make it nice. Um, we could go, uh, 
So this one was one and a half. Let's go, let's go two. Or should we go two and a half? Hmm. Well, I think two and a half. I want it to be a little bit bigger. I might not have enough room to do completely. Okay, yeah, I do. I don't have it on that side though. Let's go two and a half this way. One, two, and a half. One, two, and a half. Okay. So it's gonna come somewhere around here. Somewhere around there. One, two and a half. Two and a half. So, a um, couple things that I want you to notice is it, it doesn't have to be exactly straight on the page for it still to create the illusion. It can be somewhat uh, kind of crooked. So, this is approximately my center point right here, but I'm going to leave the rectangle, um, the center rectangle open. Um, I just... I just like to do that. So you know that the lines have got to be even numbered. This is very important or the checker pattern's not gonna work. Okay, and you can see here in my example, I've left this open. Um, what else? Uh, use a ruler. And so, uh, and they don't have to cut through the corners. Like you don't have to make it go through every single corner like this. It can, but it doesn't have to. Um, so I will try it. Well, it just so happened to work on that one. Sometimes they don't line up. Sometimes they do. And I always try to do at least so I'm lining up with this dot and that dot. This dot and this dot. Just, you know, don't make the line go straight down the center. I just think it looks uh, too predictable. Um, you know, give it some, uh, give it some space. And I usually kind of put some dots here along that center that center rectangle, the edge, to kind of give me an idea of where um, my pieces are gonna go, where my radiating lines are gonna go. Okay. And so, Again, I just, I don't like doing it right across the center like this. I just think that it makes it look less believable. Um, so what I will do is, um, I will kind of follow the same, kind of try to follow that same distance right there and see if I can make this work. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that's gonna work because it'll be the same on the other side. Oh wait, all the way out to the edge. So I lined it up with my center point and this little point that I put here on the edge of my rectangle. Okay. And I'm just going to echo these dots across. So I know I want one here. I know I want one here. Here. And here. That's my barking couch. There's a noise outside. And my couch will bark. So you may occasionally hear a sound coming from my couch. Oh, well that's... All right, so I don't like this here. I need to um, revisit that and see what I can do to fix that. Okay, 
Um, probably I'm going to move this line over to somewhere around here. I think that would look better. So beep, beep, move along kitty cat. So I'm going to take this one out and move it. Let me make sure that I need it first. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse me. Excuse me. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So yeah, we need fifteen, sixteen. We need two in here. And to be honest, I kind of feel like this one is is too wide. I kind of want to move that one back up as well. I think I'll redo that line as well. I think those these three just didn't quite don't quite look the way I want them to. All right, let's come back and see what we can do here. So this one, I'm going to move it down. Okay, I like it. Um, this one, we're going to move a little bit more up. And then this one is going to be somewhere in between. So I'm going to make it somewhere around here. Yes. Okay. So now, yep. So there we have it. All right. So again, like I mentioned in the other video, I, I tend to do the center dark just because it's faster. Okay. It's faster, but um, if you want the center to be light, if you want it to look like it's a door with, with light shining or you're inside of a tunnel and that's the light end, then, um, then go for it. Especially if you're doing, you know, these little bitty drawings, it's not going to take very long to do that. So these will be dark. Again, I strongly suggest, strongly suggest putting X's where you're going to color it with the darker value because um, it is very easy to make a mistake. I could show you some places where I've made mistakes and it just broke my heart. Okay, so here I've got the X's here and you know, um, depending on what you're using, remember your direction of line is going to make an impact on your illusion. So um, make sure that the lines, even when you're coloring, that they're following the contour, which in this case is actually straight, uh, of your design. Okay, so I want it darker in the middle, so I'm doing a little cross hatching down here and then let it fade out at the end. Straight lines. It will make a difference. Direction of line is very important here to create that illusion. Build up that value, making it darker in the center, fading it as it gets out to the edges. Okay, again, if I were you, I would put some marks because sometimes when you, you're working on this and you're right down on top of it, then it's just so easy to make a mistake and it's so disappointing because if you're working of course with most of these supplies you're not going to be able to erase um, 
you can erase colored pencil a little bit but black colored pencil not so much um, of course you can't really erase ink pen or marker so if I were you I would do the strategy of putting the X's inside the shape that you're going to color black. Okay. Strong recommendation coming from Miss Day. So as you can see, I'm just continuing to go around here. Um, you know, you're going to do the same thing, just like we did with the concentric circles. Um, you want to make sure that your lines are all radiating out from the center. Make sure that your circles or squares are concentric and that each time the distance between them increases. Okay, don't make it the same distance every time. Increase it. Um, and, you know, if you do two of these, you could make a little kinetic work of art like this one. I will show you how to do that in the next lesson. Okay, good luck.